So as I'm talking to you at the moment, we're, we're living in an extraordinary dislocation uh, caused by the pandemic all over the world. And uh, all of us are coming to grips with it. It, it. it could be a punctuation mark, marking the end of one era and the beginning of another. Uh, and certainly everybody is saying, well, it'll be a very changed world we'll go back to. Um, that's caused me to think as a historian, well, every age, it, it, it get, gets a label. Uh, and certainly most people can remember the age of enlightenment in the um, 18th century. And then there was the industrial age in the 19th century. Um, uh, my argument is that I've lived through three educational ages that affect schools. The one started in 1944 with Butler's Act, and it was an age of, of really of partnership and trust. Uh, there was a partnership between central government, local government and the schools and a total trust of everyone by each of those partners. And so there was the Secretary of State had three powers only. Um, first was the removal of air raid shelters after the war. The second was to secure a sufficient supply of suitably qualified teachers. And the third was to ration school buildings to certain standards so that it wouldn't be the case that if you lived in the north of England or a poor area, you went to a school that was built in a way that was totally inadequate. So there were national standards of school buildings and where they could be built. Uh, the amount spent per, per pupil was left to the 150 odd local education authorities. And that, that process where most of the power lay with the local authority and the schools, and very little, as I say, three powers with the Secretary of State, lasted until I would argue probably the 1970s. I say the 1970s because in 1968 Harold Wilson was so fed up as a Prime Minister because of the student unrest that he summoned all the Vice Chancellors and said, what, what the hell are you all doing that you allow this to happen? And then, of course, in the 70s, there was an oil crisis uh, and, and Callaghan marked through the Ruskin speech of 1976, a, a period of doubt and disillusion. What, what, there were black papers, was, was Tommy learning today? And what really was happening in our schools? And that, 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 period lasted until Mrs. Thatcher came to power um, in 1979. And then we've gone into a period which has lasted to this day of markets and managerialism. If you look at economic history, you'll see that there was a marked change uh, with um, monetarists involved and a deep belief that markets could solve anything. And Mrs. Thatcher's particular skill, and some would argue that I'm being too kind, but her particular skill was to apply these new economic theories to the running of governments. So you, you, you actually attacked the post-war consensus of beverage, and you really thought that the state had intervened far too much. And what you did was you, liberated uh, institutions and introduced market forces. So up till Mrs. Thatcher came to power, if you looked at everything that's written about the purposes of education, they will, it will be written by philosophers and psychologists. Mm. If you look since, it's been written mainly by economists or people strongly influenced by economists. And in this age of markets and managerialism, you first of all, if you look back at all the white papers of the 80s, uh, they had in the kind of mantra words of choice and uh, uh, diversity and competition. Uh, and, and it was manifested itself in the late 80s by the Education Act of Kenneth Baker, 
when we had a reform which introduced schools having league tables, a very sharp accountability system. And that system, which has sucked power to the centre and simultaneously pushed decentralised power to uh, the, the carrying out of those requirements to the schools. So it's, it's a kind of perverse system. You have markets, but you can't afford to let the failures that are, are inevitable in markets continue for too long. So you become very managerial and you interfere in the schools. And I think during the pandemic, schools have received, I don't know whether it's 50 or 500 pages of advice from the DfE. I know it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And the Secretary of State has acquired over the period between 1988 and the present day over 2,000 powers where originally uh, there were three. Now, I think that system has just about run its course because it, for all its successes, it, it, it requires failures. Markets do require failures as well as successes. And this is markets applying to human beings possibilities of becoming fulfilled and contributing citizens. <laughs>